Welcome to Advantages in the Management of Psoriasis, the Role of Biologic Therapies, presented by Albert Einstein College of Medicine at Yeshiva University at Immunology Live. My name is Mary Wytrowski, and I'm a registered nurse and psoriasis clinical coordinator at Texas Dermatology Associates. Today's session is a live interactive program that allows us to take questions in real time throughout this presentation. I encourage you to send us your questions anytime by typing them in the box located at the lower left-hand side of your screen. I would now like to introduce our presenter and program chair, Dr. Alan Mentor. Dr. Mentor is clinical professor at University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. Alan, Thank you for joining us today. I will now hand the program over to you to begin our discussion. Thank you, Mary. Always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, as you can see from the title uh, of the slide presentation, uh, we're going to talk today on advances in the management of psoriasis and particularly relating to the role of biologic therapies. Just from a uh, disclosure, I do a lot of research for multiple different companies and have consulted with multiple different companies, but I personally have no stock ownership or board membership on any pharmaceutical or biotechnology company. So, psoriasis as a disease. I think it's important to recognize that psoriasis is not one disease. It's a very phenotypically diverse disease affecting, as you all know, 2% of the population, which is about 7 million people in the US and approximately 120 million people worldwide. But it presents with multiple different phenotypes. Small plaque, large plaque, big massive plaques, psoriatic joint disease, etc. And this is just a spectrum of some of the patients that Mary and I have seen in our clinic over the past week. And to try and create guidelines to cover all these different forms of psoriasis, including joint disease and all the comorbidities that associate with psoriasis, is difficult. So let's talk a little bit about how we as physicians should be treating our patients. Number one, psoriasis is a lifelong disease. You can get mild, moderate, and severe disease, total body disease like we see in the center here, erythrodermic psoriasis, and then palmer plantar disease, which really is one of the most toughest of all forms of psoriasis to treat. It affects only 5% of the body surface area, yet it is as debilitating as total body psoriasis or psoriatic joint disease. And unfortunately, the majority of topicals, even under occlusion, don't produce effective treatment for patients who are severely affected with palmer plantar disease. So multiple different guidelines, and I've been fortunate enough to be involved in a number of the different guidelines that we have. The European guidelines, I've been an external examiner. The US guidelines, I've chaired for the last 10 years. And I've been fortunate enough to, to be part of Canadian guidelines and the Latin American guidelines, SOLAPSO. And some of these guidelines are up to date. Our US guidelines, for instance, have to be updated next year to include some of the more recent aspects of psoriasis. So in our guidelines, we have six different guidelines. Uh, we, one of the guidelines is specifically relating to psoriatic joint disease, others relating to topical therapy, phototherapy, biologic therapy, etc. So I think any time you have a disease as diverse as psoriasis that is lifelong with the majority of patients presenting in their 30s, say, uh, although a small percentage of patients do present later in life, this is the lifelong disease that needs lifelong safe control. No different to diabetes, no different to rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, all require long-term safe control. So we tend to hopefully have continuous therapy with our new biologics. Rotational therapy when one stops working, intermittent therapy when somebody loses his or her insurance or travels abroad, combinations with methotrexate, switching strategies. These are all things we do in clinical practice. And hopefully in the years ahead with pharmacogenomics where we can predict responses better for individual treatments, this type of switching rotational therapy will be minimized. So as we go on with this, we can talk about different combinations. Uh, all of us in dermatology tend to enjoy combinations, uh, particularly the biologics with methotrexate in rheumatology, all uh, it's trials that are done in rheumatology, for instance, psoriatic joint disease or rheumatoid arthritis, they allow combinations ab initio. 
in our psoriasis clinical studies, we can't even use a potent topical steroids. So all our trials are pure monotherapy. So we tend to enjoy using light therapy, topicals, and occasionally, as we're seeing now, two biologics in combination, particularly for psoriatic joint disease. Now, immunogenicity is a problem for us, uh, even though we have molecules that are fully human antibodies, we do have the ability as humans to produce antibodies to fully human antibodies. And this is the potential for an antigen to induce an immune response after it has been recognized by the T cell or B cell receptors. The problem is how do we measure immunogenicity, even to a fully human antibody? And many different forms of neutralizing antibody techniques are there. And depending which one is used, we will get small amounts low percentages of immunogenicity or high percentages of immunogenicity. So let's start off with the first uh, TNF-alpha agent that was approved for psoriasis, etanercept. And the benefit of this drug is it's been used in children and has been around for 15 years. So even though we in dermatology were late to the biologic revolution as compared to methotrexate that we introduced in 1971 and was only introduced 10, 12 years later for joint disease, we in dermatology as compared to rheumatology and gastroenterology have only had access to uh, these drugs since 2003, in other words, 11 years. The big difference with uh, etanercept, as you all know, it's not an antibody, it's a TNF receptor antagonist, and it does not bind complement in vitro, and therefore it has low immunogenicity. We all know the dosing schedule uh, and the fact that it is convenient and subcutaneous injection. What about its efficacy? Multiple different studies have been done uh, with etanercept to show that the approximate PASI scores, PASI 75 scores after 12 weeks, in other words, after the double dose, 50 milligrams twice weekly, uh, is in the approximate 50% range. On the other hand, if you add methotrexate or Naraban UVB, or even acid retin, those numbers, the PASI 75 numbers, go up to 70 to 80 percent uh, after 12 to 14 weeks. Safety, I think we've got very good data on safety, not just in our psoriasis population, recognizing that it's sometimes difficult to extrapolate safety from one disease to another. We have many more comorbidities in our psoriasis population particularly the metabolic syndrome with hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, liver issues, etc. But the nice thing is with etanercept's long-term safety, there does not appear to be significant issues relating to some of the issues that patients all worry about, which is infections or increased rates of lymphoma. Recognizing that our psoriasis population at baseline, just like rheumatoid arthritis patients, have a slightly higher risk of lymphoma than the general population. So the big question with drugs such as etanercept and the others that we'll talk about is will we increase the baseline risk of lymphoma? And I think all the data today, over 10 to 15 years, there has not been any evidence to suggest that we are increasing that risk. Etanercept had a very interesting study that was published in The Lancet uh, back in 2006. Not only did they measure joint response and skin response, they measured fatigue and depression. And it was dramatic that there was a 50% improvement in the depression indices as well as the fatigue. In fact, after one injection, patients will tell you, with all TNF-alpha agents, they did not realize they were so tired with or without joint disease and how much better they felt. Depression is a major issue in our psoriasis population. The incidence of suicidal ideation in our young patients is twice that of any other immune-mediated disease. And it's very obvious. Psoriasis, even involving 10 or 15% of the body surface area, is a very visible disease and a young kid is not going to be comfortable appearing in public or creating relationships with skin disease affecting them. So the big question is, can we, as I said, find these same findings with, other, with the other TNF-alpha agents? And as I said earlier, adding methotrexate to etanercept did not show any increase uh, risk of side effects and basically the uh, safety signals were no were not worsened at all and the PASI 75 results were significantly higher. Multiple studies have been done to show this.